Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session, Create Video for YouTube. Just introduce myself. My name is Benedict. I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. I am an experienced, uh, did, uh, I am an experienced coding specialist and digital skills trainer, as well as having a background in the digital creative industry and worked in that sector for over 20 years. I would also like to introduce our amazing moderator, Emma. Emma is also a Google Digital Garage coach and will be interacting with you and answering just about all of your questions via the instant chat to the right. You can identify the moderator by her name, of course, Emma, as well as a little blue spanner next to her name. Now, just before we start, I just want to call out a few things to help you today. Firstly, if you're having any trouble viewing this webinar at any point, do try refreshing your page. If you would like to join the instant chat, and please do, it's a great opportunity. You do need a YouTube account, which you can very easily set up by clicking in the box and also on the right. Now, we'll be pausing throughout the session to answer the more complex questions or some of which uh, Emma kindly passes on to me from the chat. So please do feel free to fire away with a question throughout. Now, just to let you know, we are running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of a broad offering of courses. If you would like to check out our schedule of upcoming webinar training, please see information on this in the description below, which links you through to our website. So that's the housekeeping done. Let us look at what we will cover today. And what I want to say particularly, it is great. Today, we are working in partnership with Winter, which is wonderful. So we are excited to be delivering this webinar in partnership with Winter today. And we welcome all the guests that they have invited to join this Google Digital Garage training. Now, I will now read out a short introduction on behalf of Winter before we start. We're a leading not-for-profit social enterprise that has been supporting small businesses for over 37 years. We provide free business advice, free skills training, webinars and workshops, as well as affordable workspace in locations across Hertfordshire and England. In response to COVID-19, we've developed a wide range of new webinars specifically designed for anyone considering self-employment as an option for them or for existing small business owners looking to enhance their skills to rebuild or grow their business. Now, we've partnered with Google Digital Garage to provide this free get started with, sorry, I beg your pardon, gets with this particular Create Videos for YouTube training session. Through our combined partnership, we aim to help small businesses, business owners improve their digital presence and grow their businesses online. That's https colon forward slash forward slash winter.co.uk, which I know Emma will have provided already for you there on the chat. So it's a great opportunity. All right, so let us now get started. Now I've covered all of that, but one thing I want to say before I get started, I want to welcome all of you. And if you can actually communicate where you're actually signing on from, that would be wonderful. I want to already uh, welcome um, Ak Technolo Technological World um, and uh, Hadi, welcome from Iran, I believe, and then uh, Lit Reilly um, from Bradford, welcome. Um, Mohammed as well, welcome. Um, let me see now. Aha, Jackie, welcome from a very sunny Luton. <laughs> uh, Callan, uh, welcome. Joanna, this is great, I'm from Milton Keynes. Mohammed from Iran, uh, Sirishti um, from India. Sorry, I'm doing my best with pronunciations. Photo construct Constructive um, from London, welcome. Um, and let me see now, uh, Devansh from India and Salish from India. Okay, I, I better move on, otherwise I'm going to run out of time. But it's great to have all of you here and my welcome to every single one of you who is here and present. All right. Let us now get started with this particular talk, which is create video for YouTube in partnership with Winter. Here goes. Okay, so um, first things first. Um, just covering a couple of things. We are going to be covering three areas. First of all, um, find your niche. Secondly, create engaging content. And third, get discovered and track your success. The big thing is finding your niche. What are you passionate about? And who is your audience? 
we do say in a lot of our different talks, we do say, who is your audience? Very important. The first step, who is your audience? So it's very, very important that you work that out and calculate it, okay? Now, we're going to help you with all these different steps. Then the second one, which is creating good content, you know, we'll look at the steps to take when actually planning and shooting and some tips along the way. And then, of course, get found, you know, get started, get found and track your success, no matter what you're aiming for, whether that be creating a channel for fun or to potentially create a money revenue. We will look at how you get your channel seen. OK, I hope this is helping you a little bit. A little icebreaker. All right. Uh, let me just see now. If you were only able to watch one topic of YouTube videos for the rest of your life, what topic would you choose? What topic would that be? If you only had an option to watch one topic of YouTube videos for the rest of your life. And it sounds quite dramatic, but it's to help you. All right. I will have a check and see what response you get back to me on that one. So, um, OK, before we get started, let's discover why YouTube is the right place for you and your content. I will keep my eye open on that, what your particular area. I know myself, for example, I have a passion particularly for composing, film composing. So I think mine will be particularly to do um, with that side, um, composing. Um, Cullen, welcome. I see educational. OK, great. Excellent. So that's your particular side. Sabif, movies. Yes, I do love movies, too, as well. Absolutely. And Crystal, starting a business, uh, photoconstructive, um, psychological. Very interesting. Great stuff. This is wonderful. It's really interesting to look and decide what it would be, what particular topic. Um, JB Hyde, you've got a channel. That's excellent. That's really wonderful. You've got a channel already. Um, so maybe your own channel to be able to watch that. And then Abhishek, sports and business. Excellent. Uh, JB Hyde, I have a channel making pallet furniture. In interesting. Um, and then A. Malchi, entrepreneurship. Um, Muhammad, uh, we've got the annual Google video. Okay, great. Vira Swam, uh, three, human psychology. Great stuff. So it's really interesting to think about if you only had one particular chat, one particular topic. I know my wife, for example, well, she has a passion for um, sewing. So probably we in that direction, sewing, particularly in that way. Um, and oh, Hadi, we're uh, learning Spanish, learning computer. Excellent. Several topics. <laughs> OK, got to be one. Don't forget. Excellent. Pradeep, career counseling. Excellent. So I'm going to leave that move on because it's so wonderful, your response. And this is the great thing about this. This is so interactive. It's so wonderful. You know, you can actually respond to the different questions, all of those different things which is really nice um, and which, you know, is a great opportunity for you. Um, just bear with me a moment. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for you to actually work out. My apologies for this. I just suddenly realized I didn't actually have my side titles on. So my apologies if you were missing a little bit of it. But there we go. I've got now the um, subtitles on. My apologies for the delay. OK. so. Um, let us now get back to where we were. All right. So just going back onto this. Um, continuing. Uh, next one. So free one-to-one -one mentoring is a great opportunity if you are a small to medium business uh, in the United Kingdom. At present in the United Kingdom, we hope eventually to expand this to other countries. But if you're a small medium country, uh, sorry, company within U United Kingdom, um, or a charity is great opportunity for one-to-one -one mentoring with one of us. Great opportunity, and we're you know to assist you with the different things you know, and a range of digital skills you know you know building a strategy to finding more customers online. Obviously, we would be there to assist and help. So it's a great opportunity. Certainly, if you're in the UK, unfortunately, it's only in the UK at present. Hopefully, this will all eventually all develop for other countries. OK, let us move on. So YouTube, thank you very much, Emma. I can see you put the link there. Fabulous. So YouTube is where people are watching. Now, you can see here 2 billion logged in users every month. Now, this has increased, in fact, I would have said it particularly because this is a little bit of time ago. And there's more. We can never keep up to date constantly, you know, the latest information. Greater than 1 billion hours watched every day. 
over 1 billion. Second largest search engine uh, for different people searching the different things and 500 hours of video uploaded every single minute. So, you know, it's, it is actually the second largest search engine after Google. So you can imagine there's so many people who, and if you think about it, I don't know about you, but if I'm looking for a solution to a problem, obviously I will look for something I can read. That's absolutely fine. But half the time I want to be able to take that shortcut of seeing a person demonstrate it for me nice and clearly. And often, you know, that will help me a lot more. Now, of course, being present on YouTube gives you a voice and an opportunity to connect to audiences. This is a big thing. All right. So having your say on YouTube. The big thing now, you know, YouTube's mission really is to give everyone a voice and to show them, you know, to the world. So these are YouTube for essential values of freedom. These are the four um, values that they have. Freedom of expression. You know, on YouTube, people can express themselves and share their story with the world. Stories are so important. The idea that everyone has something important to say. Now, YouTube believe that people should be able to speak freely, share opinions, foster open dialogue, and that creative freedom leads to new voices, formats, and possibilities. The other thing is freedom of information, that everyone should really have easy, open access to information, that video is a powerful force for education. Um, I saw one of you put there, educational, that's what you would want, absolutely. Building understanding and documenting world events, big and small, whether your passion is cars or cakes, there is space for you and your passion on YouTube, okay? It also, there's another one, which is freedom of opportunity. Now on YouTube, anyone can follow their passion and create something that everyone can watch. Now. Everyone should have a chance to be discovered, build a business and succeed on their own terms and that people, not gatekeepers, decide what is popular. Freedom to belong, the, the fourth one. Everyone should be able to find communities of support, break down barriers, transcend borders and come together around shared interests and passions. So these are the four principles which are really important to you too, okay? Finding your niche. Next section now, let's have a look at a couple of the different things. Now, the big thing is understanding your what, why, and who, okay? So what is your channel about? Why are you creating content? Is it, you know, is, is it for fun, potential work, document your experiences, you know, share your experiences, have a focus, you know, maybe a new hobby? Um, yeah, I mean, for my wife, for example, her new hobby was sewing and it just took off. We've got a gigantic machine downstairs. Uh, who is your audience? Who is going to watch your content? You know, this will really help you decide the tone and style of your videos. Creating a full and rounded idea of what you're doing, why you want to do it, and who you're actually aiming it at helps you to focus your attention and create content with purpose. So let's start with the what, okay? So define your passion. You know, what is your channel going to be about? One of the best things about YouTube is that you can actually engage with and grow a community no matter what you're passionate about. You know, whether it's uh, comedy, sports, fashion, gaming, food, or simple everyday life, just to provide some examples. So through YouTube, you have the power to connect with a large and diverse audience with the same passions as you. That's the whole thing. And of course, the big thing, determining your passion. So what are your values and beliefs? Ask yourself, what are your values and beliefs? What are you passionate about? And what is your story? Story is so important. There was a test they did. Um, there was a TED Talks uh, where they discussed this thing, where uh, they did a test where um, they, the volunteers in the audience had uh, detectors attached to their scalp to detect the brain waves. And when the person went out to, to speak, at first their brain waves were a bit all over the place. But as soon as the person started, caught their attention and started the story, suddenly, well not suddenly, everyone went to the same brain wave. No, they, 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 they went into sync. So gradually they went into sync, gradually over time, because they were getting more and more captured with the story. If you think about a film, you're going to see a film, you go, <gasps> whatever, when you're watching, you suddenly realize you're not the only one in the cinema responding like that. So it's the same kind of thing. 
so um so story is very useful and you can take advantage of that so what is your story that's the important thing now if you're not sure about what you want your channel to be about yet searching through content you enjoy watching and thinking about subjects that excite you is a great place to start you know what what excites you what are you enthused about and what is the you you know looking for the unique selling point what is the particular thing you can provide that they don't provide but still would be really something you know it's very exciting so you can also research what is trending on youtube for uh, inspiration as well now, one of the key ingredients to success is being passionate about what you make or what you do or what you're presenting. So the first step is to decide what your YouTube channel is going to be about. Now, once you know what you want to talk about, okay, obviously this is, you know, I'm going rushing through this and of course I only have an hour to, you know, share all of this with you. Take all of these things back with you and just get your brain cells working on these different things. What do you want to have? Particular things, you know, that you want to really use. My apologies, I haven't been able to check all your different comments and everything. Emma, no doubt, is responding to them all, which is fabulous. But, you know, ask yourself these questions to get yourself started. Okay. So once you know what you want to talk about, next we need to think about why. Okay. So let's have a look. So identify your goal. So, for example, I want to inspire people to love and cook soul food. All right. And there we've got Mama Cherry. So these are just some of the different examples. So why did you uh, join YouTube and what do you hope to accomplish with your content? Ask yourself. And, you know, why are you creating the content? And ask yourself what you are aiming for. Now, whether you want to build awareness of your passion, influence and inspire your viewers, entertain people, or just simply have people love what you are doing that, you know, you can share, people watch those things. So creating content gives you a chance to positively influence your audience and build trust, which ultimately grows loyalty with your audience. So before you start to create content, you need to be clear on your goal. Now, if you are clear on your goal first, it makes it a lot easier to create the steps to get there. Now, okay, so here we're going to look at some of the different examples. Sorry, I jumped ahead to the examples. Here we've got some of the different examples. Now we've got um, Mama Cherry. I want to inspire people to love and cook soul food. You know, welcome to my channel. Together with my family, foster children and friends, we will be sharing soul food recipes, cooking tricks, tips, hacks, all seasoned with love. So there's an example with Mama, uh, sorry, Mama Cherry. Yes, Mama Cherry. And then we've got uh, Super Sorrel. I want to create a community of toy collectors. So a YouTube channel aimed at adult nostalgic toy collectors. You know, Super Sorrel posts daily, bringing toy content and action figure reviews seven days a week. He says, I unbox things so you don't have to. So he he, that people can share his joy in unboxing these particular things. And if that's what your passion is, that's what you'll really love. Detailing, um, detailing world, I want to share my passion for cleaning cars. Now, maybe a lot of us think, oh, God, I've got to clean the car. I'll leave it off for tomorrow. But a lot, some people love that whole process or the cleaning process. So detailing world started as a forum and has used YouTube to actually showcase videos and grow their community maybe different products that you can use and all those kind of things. So get clear on your goal and you use it as a foundation to plan out your content. All right. Okay. Next activity. So find your what and why. So the big thing is, okay, as an example. So for example, it could be my what is music. And my why is to teach people guitar. My what is uh, politics. And my why is to spark debate, let's say. My what is makeup. And my why is to showcase my talent. So that's just some ideas, just to get you started. All right? Um, now, we're going to be covering some of these different things. So if, you know, it's going through all those processes, um, your what and your why. So go through that process now with yourselves and actually write it down. Get it down on paper, whether it's pen and pe uh, pencil and paper or is it sharing with Emma. It's great if you can share it. It's just a start, getting your brain cells working on these things. 
Now, to make the foundation of our content even stronger, we are going to add on the who. Who are you creating content for? All right. Now, define your audience. Now, the big thing here, you know, is working out what, who you're actually providing for, you know. You know, in addition to why you're actually telling the story, think about who you're targeting. You want to identify your audience. Who's going to be watching your channel? If you think about this before starting to create your content, then you can tailor your communication. You want to be sure that viewers relate to, you know, your videos. So you ideally build up a persona, your main persona of those people who will be watching this video. You can really sort of make it real for yourself, you know, what pet they have, what they call a pet, whatever it might be, to make it real for yourself so you know who you're particularly targeting for and making sure that the the topic, the way you're covering it and everything is, is, is ideal for them. And who and where or where is your audience? Think about all the details, so age, gender, parental status, household income, geographic location. There's so many different things just to paint that picture for yourselves. What are their behaviors and interests, hobbies, music, movies, sport, history, pets, names of pets, product research, all of those different things. Um, what video content are they watching? You know, informational, conversational, social, emotional, or entertainment, all of these different things. So think of those things to make it nice and clear for yourselves. Um, and all of these details, like the age, geography, or other characteristics of your audience may impact what tone of voice you use, how you're putting it across, what information you're putting it across, all of those different things it really helps you get a clear idea of who you of your content. Okay, a useful tool to help identify your audience is find my audience on uh, thinkwithgoogle.com. Um, if you can provide that link, thank you so much, Emma. It's a great opportunity. So find my audience on thinkwithgoogle.com. Uh, that's that's a tool, a useful tool you can use, you know, um, to help you. All right. Now, create a persona. I did mention before, but a persona is a representation of your ideal subscribers. You know, it's a representation of the, the individuals who will come back uh, time and time again to watch your videos and potentially refer to new subscribers. So whatever the content may be, you know, you, you will always have a persona that your videos resonate with. So in that sense, it's important to try to understand, learn and adapt to that persona. Now, creating that persona helps you to always check in that you are creating content that aligns with your passion. You're keeping true to that personas or that you're matching your goal and your audience and of course a persona is a representation of your ideal target audience so you want to avoid biases and create it from create it from research do as much research as you can there are so many different sources to draw from now a good place to start is by identifying general demographics and use find my audience to identify pain points desired experiences values and goals now, if you already have subscribers, use them to create your persona as they resonate with your content. You know, utilize tools that offer statistical insight into how subscriber behavior translates to the web. You know, we're going to look at YouTube analytics later in this, in this session to help you a little bit. Now, if you haven't got subscribers or a channel yet, don't forget to take advantage of YouTube and Google searches. You know, YouTube and Google are the largest search engines, so see which keywords you want to rank for and figure out why the top search results landed their position. Now, we are going to look at the importance of trends and keywords, you know, in the next section. And then when creating your persona, Add as much details as possible. Make this person real. Unique name, even a photo, kind of like this would be, this kind of, this is the persona. It will help you give them a virtual identity in your mind. And, you know, summarize your persona, the hobbies, desires, frustrations. A persona is a great tool to have when creating content. It's whenever you get stuck, you can ask yourself, would this resonate with Rohan or whoever you have aimed your persona at? You know, it can also highlight the style of content you might create, you know. If he's short of time, for example, maybe, you know, short videos are going to suit him longer than, than longer uh, videos. Okay, 
Now we have our what, why, and who. We can use them all together to create our content ideas. Okay, so let's have a look at these. Um, what? My passion is looking after cars. Why? I want to share my passion and knowledge. Who? Rohan, the persona I researched and created, loves learning about car detailing. Content idea. Create videos showcasing tips on how to look after your car. So these three questions can really help you identify your niche and give you a clear idea of the content you want to create. So come up with a variety of ideas and then use the strategies in the next section to decide if it's the right direction for you and your particular goal. All right. We're going to pause for questions. I've not, I've not got much time, but let me have a look. Crystal, Crystal, welcome back. I think I'm, I'm sure I've seen you before. Welcome. Crystal, how do you decide on the what? Okay. To a large extent, this is what you feel passionate about, Crystal, without a doubt. You know, it's something you are so passionate about. Yeah, that is the what, all right? What do you want to be putting across? Because as we've got an example here, what my passion is, what is your passion? What do you really want to do? What do you want to be communicating? And what do you know so much about that you can? Okay. Um, Crystal, what? Uh, not sure why. Okay, to connect the eco-conscious consumer with content they love. Absolutely. Just be careful there, Crystal. You've got to be careful. The eco-conscious consumer with content they love, that's wonderful. That's tremendous. But some of us, you know what I mean, put it into, you know what I mean, just words that we can understand easily. I mean, obviously, this is when you're sharing with people. But so it is as clear as possible why to connect them. Okay. Looking back at this as an, as an example, why I want to share my knowledge and teach others. That's why the person wants to do it. Is this why you want to do it? To connect? Is this your goal? Is this why? Is this what you want to do? Is this why you want to do it? You want to connect the eco-conscious consumer with content they love? Is you know? So, I know it's a lengthy process, and of course we're only just getting started on it. And there's all these questions, but I hope that helps you a little bit, Crystal. Um, uh, don't forget you can go through the video. If there's anything you missed in everything. Um, up to 24 hours after I finish giving the talk, which hopefully won't be late, um, it'll you have a chance to go over. It's the same Earl and everything. You can see the video now, and you can see the chat as well. Okay, I hope that's helped you, Crystal. Muhammad, uh, what marketing advertising? Why? Oh, is that was that your answer? Not sure why. Not sure, Crystal. So I'm just going back to Crystal. What? Not sure. Okay, why? Okay, make sure you got that what there, Crystal. <laughs> okay, Muhammad. What? Marketing and advertising. Great stuff. Is it for a particular area, Mohammed? Is there any particular marketing and advertising? That's wonderful. Maybe to make sure that you get quite specific with that one. Does that help? Um, marketing and advertising. Why? I love these topics. I want to show. Ah, excellent. Um, I want to show people, show people that you're the expert at it. Absolutely. Um, without a doubt. I did a, um, I have a 2D, 3D and whiteboard animation company. And I did do a um, uh, one of my one of the top three consultancy companies asked me to do um, to give them feedback 2D or 3D, and eventually I used that as as a blog. And so many people were so think about Mohammed and Crystal. Think about what your clients are asking as well when you're thinking about things for blog and for videos as well. What what is what is the gap? What, you know, where can you fill in that? Okay. I better move on because I'm going to be running out of time. I hope that's helped you, Crystal and Mohammed. And thank you so much, Crystal and Mohammed, uh, for your contribution. That's fabulous. Okay. It's this heat, I think. It's things, grand, dangerous things to me. So create engaging content. Let's get started with this. Okay. Activity. So what do you think makes engaging YouTube content? All right. What makes you subscribe and share? Think about the things that you like. That you know, there's no right or wrong answer, but think about the things that you enjoy about content. Doesn't mean you have to replicate it and all the rest, but the point is you can learn a lot about what you like. Therefore, maybe it's something similar to your passion, 
and then you can start looking for maybe there's a gap or something and you can provide videos covering those kind of areas um and of course also look at what's trending you know on youtube you know the list of trending videos helps viewers see what's popular and happening the danger of that sometimes if your area is very niche it might be quite difficult to find it on the trends but don't forget it'll match of course what you're watching as well if you if it's tracking all of it and then it'll put some of the things that which are being searched for so that can help you a lot as well and check out the ones you click on why ask yourself these questions study all these other ones that can really help you so together we are going to look at creative strategies that help develop engaging videos and build a loyal community let us now break down the steps needed to create engaging content all right let's go so steps to create engaging content First of all, research and plan. You know, research will give you a strong foundation for engaging content. If you really look into it, if you really find out as much information as possible, you are doing research. You're finding out so much information. That's going to help you in masses. Planning your content will make creating it easier and save you time in the long run. Don't forget as well, if you plan in the future, you're leaving your unconscious or your brain working on it. <laughs> the whole time there's a there's a phrase we've got here an hour of planning can save you 10 hours of doing okay have your equipment ready you know it's easier than you may think to get started you can start with what you've got we're going to go through this now we'll have a look at using equipment you already have as well as ways to enhance it okay create your content you know once ready get out and give it a go just try, just record, just push that record button, look at it and go, oh my God, but just get started, just try. It's so important to take um, on a trial and error at attitude, so important to just get you started. Um, organize and edit. So we'll have a look at the simple sets, consider you know, when editing. All right, so we're gonna start with research. So of course, being well-informed, of course, can really kickstart your creative process of course get inspired by all these different things explore competitor content you know look at what is already being done listen to experts or someone with experience and learn from their story analyze the new social media trends current events or debates that people may feel strongly about and determine how these contribute to the conversation learn from all your uh, competitors people your uh, peers who are in the same sort of industry and offering the different things. There are many resources available to you to support your research. Um, here are some to consider using. Think with Google. As mentioned, find my audience as one tool on Think with Google. You can really use that. Um, you'll find the data we're exploring and the trends we're tracking along with forward-looking perspectives and behind-the-scenes looks at digital campaigns across industries, platforms, and audiences. Then we've got Google Trends, you know, allows you to think, track the popularity of various search terms over a period of time. Often you have to go quite sort of generalized, but it also gives you some suggestions as well uh, for some uh, keywords as well. And if you already have a channel, utilize, you know, uh, YouTube uh, search traffic will actually allow you to see what search, um, what search has directed viewers to your content. Now, this can give you insights on things like titling, popular formats, and audience familiarity with your name or brand, which is really useful. Um, YouTube Analytics, you know, lets you monitor the performance of your channels, videos, and content with up-to-date metrics and reports. If they left, why, when did they leave? Think about why the detective work of working all these different things out. So that's all of these different things. And one of the biggest things more than anything is of course, the people you're interacting with already, what kind of questions are they asking? Okay, fine. If you don't have access to your clients yet, check on YouTube, what questions do, what comments do they say? What, what things, what questions were unanswered there particularly, you know, just to give you an idea as well. So once you've researched your passion, audience, and everything in between, you know, you want to think about the type of content to create. Okay. So the right type of content for you. 
All right, so there are a number of different options, of course. There is no right or wrong here, of course. But these are some of the different ideas that you can use. You can use one-off videos, you know, get your message across with a quick, impactful hit. Short form, keeping your videos under three minutes. So this is, you know, great if you plan to be an always-on channel, you know, releasing content with a continuous theme in the same format, for example. And then you've got the longer form video. You know, can you deliver information in a way that keeps people coming back for more? Now, long term typically means longer than three minutes. You know, an example of this would be, you know, podcast interviews, live stream and documentaries. And then another way you could do it is series. You know, take as long as you want to tell your story. But the point is you're breaking up into part one, part two, part three. People can see the structure and that's quite that quite often attracts people as well. You know, and you may release them all at once or sporadically, you know, maybe a regular post for you on your channel, whatever it might be. And what I'd recommend more than anything, all with all of these different things, start small and then build as you grow into the platform, learn how it's doing, get feedback to inform you and learn from that, and then maybe enlarge it or do more. You know, you constantly got to use that feedback. Okay, transition. So when deciding what content, sorry, hitting my microphone, when deciding what content works best for you, then refer back to your goal and why you are creating the content. You know, it can really be helpful to create, you know, a release schedule as well. So a release schedule. So how many videos can you release per week? Please don't be too ambitious. <laughs> you know, you know, don't go, oh yes, I can do 10 per week. You know, don't, don't be too ambitious because then that's just gonna be overload and um, so work out what you can really concentrate on, considering all your other work with your company and everything. What days of the week will you actually release on, all right? There are different things um, which can help you to decide when to actually be putting the different content as well. Certainly social media helps you a bit as well. So some of that was the analytics. Some, some of the different things they give as well as when people particularly are looking for certain things. Will you rotate uh, content type as well? Now, you can rotate it, of course, and then repeat it and have it back again and everything. That's another way you can do it. And will you link content to specific days of the week? You know, could be Tech Review Tuesday or Fun Facts Friday or something like that. And people do, you know, us people, human beings, we do get quite um, into our habits. And if there's a change and we're not warned, we get quite cross. So, so you know, sometimes people get quite cross. If, if, you, if you go for a regular, every Friday there's a video, let's say, and then suddenly there's no video, make sure you inform all the people as well, okay, if there's gonna be a problem. Structure your story, okay. Now, once you've actually decided what type of content you want to create, now, you may need to think about how you're gonna tell your story the structure. Structure is so important. No matter the length of your video, all stories have a beginning, middle, and end. Now, when structuring your video, it's a really good idea to use the same content con uh, concept. Make sure I can speak English. So, beginning, the hook. Introduce the aim of the video and make sure all your content tees up to that particular aim. Okay, you want to hook your audience uh, not fish, of course, but hook your audience, grab their attention at the beginning so they continue watching. Middle, engage. This is your main content. What, you know, what are you trying to communicate and why is it important? Everything should ladder up to your content goal, should lead up to all of these different things. Now, you may want to identify a problem for your viewers and follow it with a solution as well. People love that as well. I mean, obviously, they look, they're looking for a solution to that very problem. Uh, end call to action. A clear call to action tells your audience what to do next. Subscribe, comment, watch another video of yours. Again, think back to your goal. Now, actively ask for comments, likes, and subscribers in your videos. That is so helpful. Try and focus on the benefits of subscribing, of course. Now, I don't know about you, but it takes me a long time till I'm willing to subscribe. But if I'm really impressed with it, I will subscribe because it's covering my area, which is composing for films or whatever. 
think, okay, this person knows what he's or she's what she's talking about, and I will often subscribe because there's so much I can learn from that person. So it can lead to more viewers and more promotion as similar searched or viewed on YouTube. So all of this can help. Now, this may be your final clear end call to action, but you will probably want to have mentioned it early on, right at the beginning. Often you will see people going, please do subscribe before you finish this video. Uh, and, you know, just sign on and if you, you know, all that kind of side. So it really can help. So not everyone watches to the end. Don't forget that. So call to actions can be used throughout your video. Not Maybe not too many times, but certainly near the beginning and at the end. Okay, so before, that's just my own recommendation I recommend, recommend to you. So remember, the beginning hook, the middle engage, the end call to action. All right, now before filming, you may want to write down what you're actually going to say. Now believe me, uh, I have uh, cons I've trained uh, a gourmet restaurant in Norway and it was quite funny, the owner was the chef and I went through all the different things, and he's like, oh, gosh, there's this, that, the other thing. But then we went on to the script, and I said, you've got to prepare the script. And he was like, no, I don't need a script. And, of course, came the day, and, of course, eventually he needed a script. So it's so important you do need a script to work from. Okay. Now, um, I mean, you know, there's different forms of script. You know, you could have it like boxes. You know, it doesn't have to be every word you're going to say. You don't have to be reading like this. You know, that would be bad. Um, all right, now, writing for your video, very, very important. Speak directly to your audience. I'm trying to speak directly now to you, of course. Use you and talk to your viewers, of course. It's more personable, and people prefer being spoken to rather than spoken at. Right, now, this is what, you know, that's what they prefer. Write it the way you would say it. You know, your audience isn't going to read your script, so write what you would actually say, you know, not what looks best on paper. You're not you're not putting together a book here. And of course, you're communicating. Imagine you're communicating to someone who's very dear to you. Could you be your mother, your partner, whatever it might be, but you try to explain all these different things to this person. That will help. So read your script out loud. Okay, go through it, test it out. Do it, do it out loud in front of people and in front of your friends to see how it's going and everything. Get feedback as well. Now, once you know everything, the dialogue is, you know, the monologue or the dialogue is clear, you'll know roughly how much footage you need to shoot and what shots you need as well. Now, if you're using a voiceover, be sure to shoot some extra footage to account for pause in the dialogue and visuals that don't make the cut. Okay, now a good way to plan your shots is by using a storyboard, okay? It's not the be all and end all, but it's a useful way you can use. Now, we have there on the left, we've got their film storyboard. Um, it's a great tool to use, you know, to plan out your video. And you would typically have there at the top, you would have the different actions of the people as a way you would sketch. You don't have to be a great artist, you know? You're not, you're not doing Renoir here. You're just doing quick, rough sketches there so you can understand them or the person who's also taking part can understand. And then, of course, you've got the words underneath, so you fill in the words underneath there. So it's a useful tool, you know? Start with, and of course, start with the beginning, middle, and end, you know, plan each shot in detail. Because the more planning you can do, the less time it'll take in the long run. So consider the, the detail, you know, visuals, you know, audio. So what can be seen in the shot, background item. Make sure there's no other logos, you know, distracting from your own important logo, you know, that kind of thing. Audio, sound, what can be heard in the shot? Sound is so important, you know. That's why I've got a micro. You don't have to have a microphone, but it's recommended that you have, you know, if, if anything, it's the sound. Because often people si sign off because the sound is not good. They can leave just like that. Props. What what you actually need to make this shot effective? Can you can you demonstrate? You know, is there something you can hold in your hand? Ooh, do we need to go onto the screen with your voiceover at some point? You know, all of these different things. And then crew, you know, do you actually need help? Do you need someone to be filming? Or, you know, is your camera placed somewhere stationary on a tripod, for example? You know, do you need something passed to the presenter whilst in the shot, for example? A dialogue, do you need a dialogue? <laughs> all these different things. Now, with all your research and planning done, 
we're, we're presuming you've done all of this now, you know, with all of your research and planning done, the next thing to consider is your equipment. Now, what is so important, start please, with what you have. It doesn't mean you need the most amazing camera, you need the most amazing microphone, you need, you know, start with what you've actually got. You don't need a fancy studio, you know. The point is your story, what you're getting across. I do recommend, though, at least if you, okay, well, we'll come on to that. So a couple of different things. Video camera, you can actually use a smartphone nowadays. You can put it onto a tripod, you know, and you can film. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. You can be using Android nowadays. You could use it as a handheld camera. It's a little bit jerky there, um, but it'd be better, you know, stable on a tripod if it's just you doing it. Um, I don't normally recommend the built-in camera with a laptop, for example, because generally, I'm just making a generalization here, you understand, often they're not quite as good quality as a separate camera, um, but, you know, you can still use it. Okay, lighting. Good lighting can really enhance the look on the camera, so natural light is effective for filming. Um, Make sure, of course, you're facing a window where the natural light is actually going to be coming from. Make sure the, the natural light is not behind you. Then you're just going to be there as a silhouette, which would not be so great. Um, and, of course, aware of shadows. Don't have light just above you, so you've just got long shadows in your face. Unless, of course, you're doing some kind of horror talk on horror so and then video editing software there are lots of options when it comes to editing of course there is iMovies which you can use on Mac there is Windows Movie Maker on the PC you know you can use free online editing apps um, it's all sorts of different ones you can also do some quick editing touch-ups actually within YouTube Studio, so don't forget that. And you can edit or edit end scenes as well as trim unwanted sections of your video before or after publishing. You can always add your basic equipment, but as you can see, you know, you can actually start with what you have. So what is stopping you? <laughs> okay. All right, so enhance your video further. All right, so we've covered some of the different things that are vital, okay? If you've got an Android phone or an iPhone, get a tripod just so it's nice and sturdy. Lighting. There are lots of affordable LED lights. It's recommended, available to buy online. Just be careful you don't put it 100%. I've seen a lot of people use LED lights and they look like a ghost because it's so bright. I'm mine at the moment, which is uh, about a foot away, a foot and a half maybe, it's at 14%, only 14%. So, you know, maybe maybe needs a bit more light, but still, it's you don't need to be too bright. Microphone, very important that you can be heard. I'm aware of the time, so I'll be careful that I move get a move on here. Video editing software, of course, try the stuff which is free first, which is which is fabulous. Okay. Now, top tips to think about. Consider what can be seen. What is in actually in the cam in, in, in the view? What is within the shot of the, the camera? You know, what's on your clothes? Avoid prints, choose clear backgrounds, and be be careful about the logos that you can actually see whilst filming. You know, everything you wear or display sends a message and adds to your story. So make sure your outfit contrasts with your background. So you do, you know, so you don't blend in. You just got a floating head. You don't want that. So choose your space carefully. You know, try and find a room with clothes or carpets in, and avoid echoes. You know, please don't do it in the bathroom unless, of course, you you're doing the design of the place and you're taking them there to show them there. But you know, you get my point because there's a lot of echoes around there. Camera positions. Consider angles and movements. Think about how your video will open and close and what are the key moments in between are. So how will this affect your sound as well? So consider recording your audio separately. You know, use a free audio app like RecForge or Recorder Plus and record your audio file with a separate device to the one you're actually filming with. Okay. Five steps to basic edit. So import and organize the footage. Okay you know, uh, version one, version two, all of that to help you. Um, okay, uh, add visuals and sound effects. You know, you can have almost unlimited options to add titles, intros, and transitions. Don't go too far with makes it all 
you know, just too much. Check your sound. So important to check your audio right from the beginning. Because if it's a bad audio, you've lost them. Make color corrections as well, depending on the project. You can actually do some color correction to fix the brightness and change the color to match all of your shots. And then export and upload your video. So, okay. Now, to understand these steps further, head over to, there's also Google, um, sorry, YouTube Creator Academy. Check it out for a you know beginner's guide to video editing. All right. Thank you very much, Demo, for providing the link for that. Okay, so pausing for questions. Mohammed, um, is it okay to have channel with two subjects? Absolutely, you can have um, two separate ones, and of course, you can categorize them. So you could have one subject under yeah. I mean, ideally, if there's two very different ones which are not related, it's preferable that you have two separate business ones, one for that one and one for the other one. If they're all part of the same business, but they're in different categories, you can divide them into categories. I hope that helps, Mohammed. Okay, let me move swiftly on. We've got eight minutes left. Get discovered and track your success. Let's go over these quickly. So and enhance your video's discovery. So use keywords. Be searchable, add tags, and promote as much as possible. All right? Um, under, sorry, I know I'm going quite fast. You will have a chance to go back. Um, after I finish, up to 24 hours. Okay, understand your keywords. Now, use popular terms around your existing keywords to help your video get found. Use tools like Keyword Planner to actually help you find out what your audience is searching about. Don't forget, you've also got, um, if you register with Google Ads, you've got a Keyword Planner, which you can actually use, and it's totally free. Um, and then use autocomplete suggestion on YouTube. It's really useful. You start typing something and see what they suggest the term, you know, to finish your sentence with. That can be really helpful to get an idea of what people are searching for. Write searchable titles and descriptions. Reinforce, you know, important words. Identify, you know, content type. Label with brand or series and keep your description short and visible. Um, Reinforce important words like mini lemon meringue pies ap appears in the video's titles and description, which increases the likelihood that YouTube could surface the video in search results, okay? And give an overview of your video using natural language, not just a stream of keywords, of course. Yeah, it must make sense what you're putting there. Identify content uh, type, okay? Um, so, what are, so for example, how to easy recipe, reaction, video, those kind of things, and label with brand or series. You know, who's done this? You know, Mama Cherry in description, Super Sorrel in title, and all these different things. And then keep your description short and visible. You know, just see the first two lines. That's what people will be reading. Okay. Add video tags as well to help viewers find your content. So tags are very useful. Include words from your title and a mix of both general and specific tags to thoroughly and accurately describe your video. So here we've got hash hall, hash toy hall, hash shopping hall. So use keywords in their synonyms also. Don't forget synonyms. Including these terms can help maximize your search. And consider information not communicated in your title and description. Think about you, you search, your search on YouTube. Okay. Build your community, integrate your channel into your website, social media, email, and, and anywhere you are visible online. It's an excellent way to get your videos in front of interested viewers, encourage continued interaction you know, with your brand and help to spread your story further. Add links to your emails, videos to your blogs, you know, share teasers across your social pages, add your social media handles into your description page. You know, you could use a community tab to in interact directly with your subscribers, which, you know, builds trust and loyalty as well. And you can also use buttons, you know, uh, to your YouTube banner to take your viewers directly to your other pages, which is useful. Okay. You might have to watch this one again after I finish. I'm going to have to go in so fast. Promote and integrate your channel. So um, the big thing here, um, we've got what has Mama Cherry done here to promote her YouTube channel on other platforms? She's added her social 
platform links on her YouTube channel, adding links to her YouTube channel to her social platforms, consistent branding, keep consistent, and tone of voice. Integrated YouTube videos and the social media pages. And then if you head over to her website, you'll also see that she's integrated her YouTube videos into her site as well. So it's a great way to make the most of the content as well as reach more viewers. And the great thing is if you've embedded it in the in your U, on your uh, website, the person can choose to watch it on YouTube, therefore opening up YouTube and then seeing some of your other videos. Okay. All right. Understand your users with analytics. YouTube um, analytics records your channel's progress. You know, who is watching, the time of day, where in the world they are. It even shows you how long the video, uh, the viewer stayed on your video, when they dropped out, why, what happened. To access your analytics page, sign on to YouTube uh, Studios pay, uh, page and actually select analytics from the left-hand menu. Within YouTube analytics, you'll be able to Look through different tiles to help you see data that's more relevant, you know, to your goals. And, you know, what types of content are viewing your viewers, your channel, what creators your audience has an affinity for, and you can read the reach plus scope of your content. Have a look at that as well. Okay, now these stats help you know what's working and what's not, so you can adapt and change to build your channel to to suit your audience. Okay, now use data to help you understand if you're hitting your goals. So success on YouTube is not just about uh, counts and likes. It really depends on what matters to you. So impressions is log every time a viewer comes across one of your video thumbnails on YouTube. Be aware this does not include traffic from notifications, end screens, or external embeds. So think of each impression as potential reach on YouTube and an opportunity to earn a view. Um, our viewers seeing, hearing, and catch my video click through rate, uh, CTR shows you what percentage of your impressions turn into views. And then views um, reflect how many times the video has actually been watched and can actually be in a, as important a measure as a video's overall popularity. Are they interested? Average view duration, watch time as well, charts how long viewers have spent watching your content. Phew. Okay, pausing for questions. Let's just see if there's any questions. Abhishek, what are the best tools for video editing? Whew, that's a, an interesting question, Abhishek. It depends what I would recommend that you just start with something like iMovie or you start with you know Windows Movie Maker. There's another one um, I use. Uh, let me just see if I can remember the title of it. It's, oh, um, uh, it is DaVinci Resolve. That's one I quite like. It is also free um, and it's quite useful. You can use, but it's quite, you know, don't go too complicated. Go for something you simple. You can get into operation, get running. That's most important. Okay, so next steps on YouTube. Find your niche, you know, build your channel foundations by asking what, why, who. Create engaging content, research and plan. Choose the right content. A type of content for you, create with confidence, be consistent, get discovered and track your success. Use keywords to help people find your video, track your success with YouTube analytics, and don't be afraid to try new content. What are the next steps? We covered masses of different things here. Um, that's right, Crystal, DaVinci Resolve. So let us now, uh, the next steps and everything, think about all these different things. I hope you've taken notes. Don't forget, you can go back and check the video after 24 hours after. Get your brain thinking on all these different things. Get inspired by these things. Okay. All right. Free one-to-one -one mentoring. This is for small business charity um, in the UK at the moment, I'm afraid, just only the UK. So uh, book for one of those. Great opportunity. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for all your questions, your contribution. We're going to wrap up here as we're out of time. And thank you, Winter. It's been great working here, giving, presenting this um, in partnership with, uh, with you. So I hope that it's been a useful dive, particularly into creating videos for YouTube. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, um, if you are interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, there are a few ways. We are running many more Google Digital Garage webinars in different subjects. If you'd like, check out the schedule of webinars. Please see information on this in the description below. There will be different topics available to watch, and we will be updating the schedule regularly. Also, if you would like to carry on learning online, 
in your own time, check out the Google Digital Garage on, um, website for more online training. You do that 24-7 anytime you like. Fundamentals of Digital Marketing, we often recommend. It's a great one. It's uh, 20 hours, but not 20 hours sitting. It's in little bits, uh, but it can help you a lot. OK, finally, if you have any feedback or questions on today's session, please do communicate with us. And it would be great if you can see if you really enjoyed this session. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you, Emma. You've been absolutely fabulous. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. We look forward to welcoming you again to another Google. And thank you very much, Wenta. Welcome you again to another Google Digital Garage training session soon. Thank you. <laughs>